In Leap of Faith, Jonas Nightingale cons small-town farmers and the unemployed into giving them their money by performing phony miracles. He's assisted by his crew who gather information on those who attend his revivals so that he already knows what's troubling them. A local sheriff tries to dissuade the townspeople, but Jonas is so convincing in his con that the pleas fall on deaf ears. In the end, something seemingly miraculous actually happens, which both confuses and enlightens Jonas. Real-life faith healers are sometimes full-blown con men, like Jonas, and sometimes deluded but well-intentioned people of faith. In the film, Nightingale starts at the former and slowly becomes closer to the latter, although the film also seems to suggest that faith healing and miracles might be genuine after all, which muddies Leap of Faith considerably. So, how does faith healing work? Well, the obvious answer is that it doesn't really work, but why do those who are allegedly healed such steadfast believers? Scottish writer Charles Mackay, best known for his book Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds, once wrote, The wonderful influence of imagination in the cure of diseases is well known. A motion of the hand or a glance of the eye will throw a weak and credulous patient into a fit, and a pill made of bread, if taken with sufficient faith, will operate a cure better than all the drugs in the pharmacopoeia. Faith healing as fraud is simply a con, like in the movie, but faith healing when done sincerely, if misguided, is a cooperative form of magical thinking. Both the healer and patient believe in the healing power of either spirits, their god, or other mysterious or occult mechanisms. The healer, either consciously, if as fraud, or unconsciously, if sincere, manipulates the patient into believing that they have been cured through a series of hand motions or rituals. The patient, through this supernatural placebo, validates the healing by giving signs that the healing has worked, such as walking without crutches for a short period, which is not unusual, or claiming relief from pain, which is an effect of a placebo. When an alleged cure by faith healing occurs in a religious context, it is usually called a miracle. When Nightingale heals people, he is merely giving them confidence in themselves to either push through the pain and move their aching limbs, or believe that their more unseen illnesses are about to be wiped clean. Many faith healings are considered successful because of the cooperation of healer and patient. They work together, believe in the treatment, and this can relieve stress and even bring about curative effects through the power of suggestion. This can lead the patient to give exaggerated testimony. More importantly, since faith healers are not doctors, there will be no follow-ups, which means there will be no evidence of failures. Among the most common claims of being cured by faith healers is that of the sudden and seemingly miraculous disappearance of multiple sclerosis and cancer. There are many testimonials of these particular kinds of faith healing. How does this happen, and how do skeptics refute this? Well, for starters, anecdotal evidence is notoriously unreliable. Unscientific, non-medical testimonials from the perspective of laymen largely amount to hearsay. How can we tell if the ailments were not invented or exaggerated? Even if the allegedly healed people are sincere, how do we know their ailments were not misunderstood or misdiagnosed? Anecdotal evidence is both unhelpful in proving the existence or non-existence of something, and unsatisfactory in convincing skeptics. If your friend told you that their brother once saw a ghost, that alone would not be proof of the afterlife. Comparatively, your cousin claiming that cancer vanished due to a faith healer has some holes in it as well. Many who suffer from multiple sclerosis, cancer, and other ailments that can go into remission become targets of faith healers. This is because symptoms can come and go. Medical treatments that can be measured can be linked to improvements, but since faith healing cannot be measured due to its supernatural conceit, it would be impossible to determine that such a healing was effective, or if their disease was merely following its natural course and happened to be improved upon all on its own at that time. If faith healing has any benefit, it is that of the placebo effect. People of faith who believed in the healing might begin to exert more effort. Dr. Harriet Hall, M.D., once wrote, Many years ago, the Journal of the American Medical Association used to have a regular feature where there would be a testimonial on one page describing how a patient was cured of cancer. On the opposite page, they would print the patient's death certificate, showing that he had died of that cancer shortly after providing the testimonial. 
The explanations for most alleged cancer cures are 1. The patient never had cancer. Was a biopsy done? 2. A cancer was cured or put into remission by proven therapy, but questionable therapy was also used and erroneously credited for the beneficial result. 3. The cancer is progressing but is erroneously represented as slowed or cured. 4. The patient has died as a result of the cancer or is lost to follow up but is represented as cured. Or 5. The patient had a spontaneous remission, very rare, or slow growing cancer that is publicized as a cure. In the film, Nightingale seemingly cures the broken legs of a teenage boy. In the narrative of the film, this is a miracle. If this were to happen in real life, it could probably be explained as the boy's legs healing on their own over time through natural causes or rigorous physical therapy. People with severe injuries can sometimes regain the use of their once damaged bodies with extensive professional care. The farmers, hoping for rain, suddenly get rain. This is also attributed to Nightingale, but rain is a common enough occurrence. The drought ending while Nightingale is in town could be unrelated. People looking to faith healers for the answer can sometimes connect one irrelevant event with another, mixing up causation and correlation as people often do. Nightingale is portrayed sometimes as sympathetic, but con men faith healers are more harmful and dangerous than the bumbling, comical Steve Martin character. You might ask, well, what's the harm if faith healing can at least relieve stress? Imagine someone diagnosed with cancer who seeks faith healing. Cancer treatment ranges from incredibly invasive to comparatively moderate. If a patient is under the impression that a faith healer is on their side, they might be less willing to put themselves through the pain of the more intrusive treatments, even if those treatments are necessary. Why seek better medical care if you have already been healed by the power of God? Even the most devout people should not wait for miracles to save them instead of medical science. In the film, the teenage boy with a long-lasting injury says that he will only be healed if God wills it. But that ignores the idea that maybe God put legitimate doctors and medical science on earth to help heal people instead. It's that old story. A man is trapped during a flood. Someone on a raft drifts by, but the man says that God will help him instead. When the man waits and waits, he asks God why he wasn't saved from the flood. And God responds, I sent you a raft. Hi everyone, I hope you liked this episode, and I hope you're having a good holiday season. Please click on the orange Patreon link to support the show, and make sure to click subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss an episode. I'll see you next week.